What's up guys? Just gonna do this Visa review today. One of the things I'm definitely gonna show you, this is why the NFC card is useful to me, is because you can put these little sticker here. You have your phone to unlock the scooter, right, like this. And what makes that really useful is if you have multiple scooters, right? I can come over here and unlock the Mukata with the same phone, right? And you can add this then to multiple phones. Say you have a friend or family member that you want to be able to open both scooters whenever they want when they're riding with you. Put a sticker on the back of their phone, then they're in too. You can add as many keys as you want with these. It's just way better than this hard key. You can add as many friends or family members as you want and give them the ability to ride as well. Anyways, let's go ride this beast. We're at 532 miles. You know what that means, 500 mile review. Did the brake job on this bad boy. Everything's nice and tight now. Just how I like it. Your front brake is your friend on this scooter. If you go fast, you're gonna eat up your front brake real fast. That is my one and only real complaint on the scooters. It's just so freaking heavy and fast that the brake pads and the rotors, especially in the front, you're gonna be changing them a lot. I'm not gonna say you're gonna change them as often as I just did. I did a 500 mile rotor change on the front. That thing was toast. I think every thousand miles or so, you'll probably change your rotor on this. It's not a big or hard job. It takes 30 minutes, take the wheel off, take the rotor off. Especially if you've already replaced your rotor nuts with titanium bolts, they just come right out. There's no, no doubt about stripping a bolt or any nonsense. It's part of the, the cost of owning a big, heavy, fast scooter like this is obviously maintenance. And for you guys to do it yourself, I'm just letting you know this so that you're aware. But I'm gonna play around with the brakes on this probably. Either test out some Hope four piston brakes that they're putting on the NAMI now, or else test out Magura calipers. And then likely, I don't know, there's a Wolf Warrior now caliper that is three millimeters apparently. And I think that the, the Segway caliper is also three millimeters, so I'd be interested to see that, the Segway GT2. So there's a lot of different brakes out there, but I do think that is the weak point of the scooter. As long as you keep on top of the maintenance, you'll be good. The, the brakes work great, they just don't last as long as you wish. On the left, the scooter does have very nice control at low speeds, which is critical on a super scooter like this. If you're gonna be anywhere near people with this much power, you want it to be controllable with a nice throttle, a nice throttle curve, that you can just cruise it even at lower speeds, 15, 20 mile an hour if you want to, right? First gear, which I have this speed limited, I think 80% to top speed, which then takes the top speed of the gear is down as well but this is about 33 or so in first gear if usually when i'm cruising on bike paths or anything where there's pedestrians i keep it in gear one it's plenty to cruise it with your buddies or whatever or your girlfriend but if you've watched my vset 11 plus reviews then you know i love that scooter for one reason and it's because of the suspension setup i think it's superior to any other suspension setup in this price range for sure but in most scooters in general i think the front fork suspension is the most stable in terms of wobbles there is zero speed wobble on this scooter even at top speed haven't had a single speed wobble any time in 500 miles and if there would have been a speed wobble, that thing looks dangerous Whoop. had to concentrate for a second sorry if there would have been speed wobbles on this, I would have felt it by now, I'll tell you that. Most scooters, I would go straight here and take you guys to the bike path and do a review like that, but we're on a bit of a different scooter today, so let's just show you a little bit of what it can do. We'll just follow the flow of traffic. Go to gear three so we can keep up. This has PMT tires on it, so you can hit those leans all day.
us out our brakes since we just did those. Oh yeah, feeling great. Bedded them in already before this ride. I should make a video on how to bed the brakes in on this scooter since you guys will be swapping out that rotor a lot. It is crucial to do that correctly to make sure your rotor is not going to give you any shimmies or anything. Turn my music up and just cruise it, boys. I don't even know if you can necessarily hear me. So taking a left, we hit the bank drive through real quick. You guys are just along for the ride today. Scooter heats up about two or three volts and then it just holds so hard, the voltage. Like it takes so much to drain it, especially now it's 60, 60 something today. First really warm ride of the year. I think this scooter has some kind of traction control on it because when you start burning out, it gives you a little bit of a different feeling where it's sort of like a traction control feeling in a car where it stops the burnout just a little bit and i'm totally fine with it honestly it makes it a lot safer scooter's quick enough in mild settings to hold its own in any traffic really against trains cars trucks whatever you got it's headlight is always on, which I love. It's a good visibility feature. And when you turn it on at night, it turns on the full headlight, right? But that there's a day running light is genius. I love that feature. Definitely an upgrade from the VSET 11 Plus that the Super has a big advantage on is visibility. They also made the side lights light up all the time, as you can see. At night, this thing's like a super lit up compared to the v 11 plus much better i've been riding it in three out of five on the acceleration setting if you guys are not familiar there's what's called key settings and in the settings you can change different things like the acceleration from one to five i've been riding with that on three i've been riding with my top speed down to about 80 percent i believe then when i hit the boost i still get full power everything it helps preserve your controller and your scooter for longevity and you won't burn your controller out prematurely. 80% 3 out of 5 acceleration is plenty for any normal person. That's like as fast as a V6 car, I'll tell you that, at least. You definitely want to stay on top of your brake maintenance more than anything else on scooters. Most of everything maintains itself, I'll be honest, but the brakes... Do a tire change once a year, maybe with the brakes. You will mess with the brakes every month. It's super windy out here. We're gonna cut off and take a pad. Now, electric scooter guide, if you guys follow them, says this is one of the smoothest suspensions and best handling scooters. And I totally agree with that. The top speed obviously depends on your weight a lot. I hit 55 on GPS on what I think was a flat windless day, but it's always hard to tell exactly what your top speed is, even with GPS, even if that's accurate or not. I think around 55 is accurate. I obviously hit much higher than that going downhill with the tailwind one day. Um, you can hit much higher, but on a flat, I'm talking on a flat, perfect, windless day you know 55 is going to be a good number obviously there's you could shave weight shave wind resistance like a visor and things like that maybe 
pump your tires up over inflate them and maybe squeeze out a couple more mile per hour but there's really no point to that the scooter is good on bike paths for sure which is what we're on it's also obviously amazing in the street i don't think sidewalks are a place you ever want to take this though to be honest the most you would want to go on is bike paths in the street it's just very big and you don't want to come up on somebody on a sidewalk and scare them you're basically riding a motorcycle on this there will definitely be regulations on scooters like this like license probably and registration just because they are the upper echelon right but right now i don't think a lot of people are going to be buying these just because they cost so much let's be honest it's 4k for this you could buy two really really capable scooters for 2k each and have two people scooting for 40 mile an hour versus this that's the trade-off you can talk about some up the upgrades i've done to this i posted the tiktok video about it but i'll just include it in this review video to make it easy for anybody who buys a scooter the stuff that you're probably going to upgrade to including these solid handlebars bank bike Vibra core handlebars. They have dampening in the middle here that reduces the amount of vibration in the handlebars. Which, if you ride scooters a lot, you know that the handlebars usually get a lot of vibrations, which then go into your arms. It can fatigue you pretty quickly on scooters that have poor handlebar setups. These in my opinion are the best not only for the dampening but because the length 780 millimeter is what i run them at i think it's perfect width for me i think if you were even a little taller you could do 800 but i'm a short guy so my arms aren't super wide you say you're a taller guy you may want to add a, a riser to this to a, raise the whole handlebar up maybe four five inches i know you can get such things the height and everything is pretty adjustable and then what happens is with the handlebar has a 50 millimeter rake on it and what the rake does is pulls the handles farther back towards you and in a better angle for your hands so if you're on a straight handlebar you guys will notice on scooters it's a lot more intensive on your elbows and your forearms versus one where it's a little angle to it we're still at 79.2 right now we got a heavy headwind today coming at us so we're gonna drop more on the way out than we do on the way back on this ride you always want to be aware of the wind when you go on rides because that will definitely drain your battery if it's very windy let's test out these pmts in this corner they're nice the tires are nice the first thing you guys should upgrade if you buy this pmt tires they should just sell it with pmt tires on it to be honest it's such a premium scooter it deserves it pmt tires are non-negotiable increase your handling they last longer than stock tires there's definitely no speed while they just spin perfectly their radials they're not even that expensive when you, you factor in them you get more mileage with it do a little hill test for you guys up this with the boost let's hit it we got nice brakes too on this <laughs> the brakes are nice i just wish they lasted longer than they did for me you just pull the trigger on this thing and it's like a rocket ship that's what it comes down to it's like a rocket ship crossed with the roller coaster. There's a cop up there. Let's take a right. <laughs> There's always a little game of cat and mouse, you know, with cops and shit, but... Most of the time, they don't give a f if you're not speeding right in front of them. Yeah. This is like where the scooter shines. This is gonna be a 30 mile per hour road. It turns into like a 40, a couple miles. Check it out, dude. We're at 77.7 .7 volts resting right now. I 
have to own your lane like that. Make sure people don't have blind spots and don't know about you or something, you know. drink man the scooter is definitely more physical to ride than any other scooter I've ever ridden even more so than the regular 11 plus this shit is intense to ride I'll tell you that that you should plan in some brakes for your damn heart pressure your blood pressure and your, your heart uh, it's very much so like a roller coaster and you know most roller coasters only last like what a minute or two I think it's because if they're longer, they give people heart attacks, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just start cruising slow, gain your, <laughs> gain your system back, I'm not gonna lie. It's like you get a little overloaded, not even much so with adrenaline, almost with like adrenaline and fear and happiness, like everything at once almost. It's just different. There's so much chemical activity in your brain for sure when you're going fast on a hyper scooter and you're like standing and you're flying and it's something that you don't feel for the whole rest of your life. And then when you do it, it's just sort of like, oh my goodness, what is this rush? Of cruising it slow is great, trust me. I do it quite a bit because if you just go fast all the time, I think you would, you would pass out after like 30 minutes. This is a point where I think there's diminishing returns to speed and scooting and that there's a sweet spot for sure and even on this scooter i like mostly going 20 to 30 miles per hour but it's nice to go zero to 30 in like three seconds you know what i mean faster than anything else around catch up with most v6 cars or anything like that if i have to beat them off a line for some reason or something to, to merge or whatever who knows it's nice to have the power when you need it but it, i'm telling you right now like most people you don't should not expect to like get this and drive down the interstate to work every day this is more for cruising the bike paths the brakes are much more sufficient around 20 to 30 40 miles per hour regularly if you went 65 all out everything on the scooter all the time trust me i tried that it's going to eat through all the brakes it's probably going to eat through the tires quicker and cost you more money in maintenance if you baby it you know which sounds ridiculous on a hyper scooter but I know a lot of older guys would like buy this and baby it and have a great time because they'd never run out of battery, they have more power than they ever need on the left. Is that a truck up here at the foot in a birdhouse? Noise. Hello. Scooter's stable if you can't tell. You can do all that with one hand. Very nice. Very nice stability on this. I wouldn't recommend riding with one hand. You get any bumps, it's gonna might get you, you know, but very stable. You know, you can always tell how stable a scooter is with one hand by how much the handlebar shakes. So if you look at this, it's barely even shaking at all. This is like very still. Some handlebars go like this when you let go, the second you let go. So that all plays into the handling and why the scooter is so nice to ride. It's because it's got that beautiful, beautiful design to it that is just symmetrical and perfect and doesn't have bead wobbles to it. I feel like I've ridden this path maybe 500 times at least, maybe more. You eventually just memorize every bump, every crack. You know it's coming up before it's coming up. All the turns, especially the blind turns. Any blind corners are the worst. You really need to slow down 
before it you always you know just make sure you have visibility of everything in front of you really good visibility now this thing this tire pressure monitor is next level gets rid of that anxiety that comes along with tires and scooters and stuff a lot of us know that if you ride scooters a lot you're eventually gonna get a flat tire and you're gonna get stranded and call uber or something and this just kind of prevents it a little bit where you can at least see before it It'll warn you when it starts leaking, you know what I mean? If you have any sort of doubt, you can look down and see what your PSI is in the front and the back. You can check your pressure. It also has the temperature, which they're at 68 and 69 right now. So we're cruising pretty nicely right now. It's a pretty cool day, 60 degrees about outside. Things are running perfectly right now. Let's just take this tree. That's what it ends up being on this scooter, especially in the busy times of the day or whatever, is you just sort of get tired of passing people on bike paths and you just stick to the street on this scooter because you totally can. This has so much battery. I could take all my normal routes just in the street if I wanted to, even faster than normal. And not have any problems with battery i've never ran this below about 40 percent yet even it's been amazing range every time i'm so tired done with the ride get home basically pass out because it's so freaking intense it's so intense so let anybody tell you it's this is not intense okay about half battery right now 72.8 volts like you can hold on this road pretty easily but 25 mile per hour roads is just a lot nicer cruising with cars at that speed it's not nearly as dangerous i'll tell you that like this thing is a beast mode on 25 mile per hour roads This guy, we can beat him with the turbo, right? Up to 25, like nothing happened. This is slightly scary right here. <laughs> it has nice modulation, even when you're in the boost right now, where you can keep pace with the car without like going on, off, on, off with the throttle. Like you can pretty much keep right with them no issues all right guys we got 70 volts time to show you my favorite road in town here that i like to go down the hill shit boys <laughs> that's what i'm talking about roller coaster roller coaster oh my god if you buy this thing be f careful be f careful with your heart and your brain and with the cops and just obey as much laws as you can i get it it's crazy it's insane it's so fucking windy there's blowers and shit and traffic and I hope you guys were able to hear this uh, review alright this scooter is so insanely fast there's a, just a lot of wind noise so if it's not very good on the audio I really apologize for that here's Mr. Bench
We always give him the head nod. He's there every day, pretty much. Let's see, we're back to 69.7. That's 561 miles. 